What's up guys? And tonight, I want to talk about the fall of Sweden. Now, I know the more learned amongst you probably already understand just how bad it's getting over there. But I don't even think you know just how bad it is. I'm going to make a bold claim and say within 30 years Sweden will be unrecognisable and it will be on a very sharp downward spiral within 20 years. Now, that might seem like a long time but for the complete change and collapse of a formerly very stable and prosperous country that's pretty shocking, that's a pretty short amount of time. And if you're wondering how such a sharp decline is even possible it's due to the overwhelming indoctrination of the people the media, the politicians, they all push a certain narrative their colleges, their schools, their universities they push this point of view until it's ingrained into the populace and when I look at common connections between those at the top of the pyramid who push such a narrative I see only one connection they're all either globalists or part of the Illuminati call them whatever you will the connection is there and it's undeniable so these globalist types have become advisors they're the CEOs of the media companies they all keep pushing the same story until people believe it and if you question it you're called out you're attacked and you're forced into silence and everyone's afraid to speak up but a lot of them know they can see it around them as their country collapses they can see the problem they may not see who's pushing it on them they may not see all the way up but they see it around them so if we go back in time a little bit can we figure out where this all started to go wrong yes we can it started like it usually does in the 1960s there was a globalist type by the name of David Schwartz and he initially started by publishing articles that was sort of faintly pushing for this multicultural diversity field wonderful society and he ended up becoming a good buddy and advisor to the Swedish Prime Minister Olaf Palm and he exerted a lot of influence that resulted in the 1973 policy change in Sweden which made it law for them to become part of this multicultural society and again this David Schwartz a globalist type character again kept pushing his multicultural idea about immigration and how Sweden can change and must change so that's kind of where it started off and then when you look at a lot of the a lot of the big media companies in Sweden the newspapers, the TV channels and TV networks and they all have the same globalist connection they either have globalist families who started it and run it or globalist executives, hosts, CEOs and so on behind the scenes working for it all pushing the same objective the families that I've researched and found are the Bonaire family very globalist the Hjom family, or Jom, very globalist. You look at the top executives, Jan Sherman, globalist. You look at even the TV hosts and personalities, Robert Arschberg, globalist. You look at some of the other companies that are involved, and you can find they're owned and financed by a well known bank for most. Goldman Sachs. These are all the same globalist ties and they all push the same message. They all want the same thing and they're involved everywhere and it's simply undeniable. So we've made the prediction. We know where it started. 
but just how bad is it? Well, I've got a few choice stories. All recent, January or February of 2017, bar one, which I just think is too funny not to include. So let's get into this. Sweden needs to raise taxes to fund all the immigrants. MP reveals his integration doesn't work. So they bring them all in, it costs them all money, and they need to raise taxes for the native Swedes to pay. How much? Refugees will cost Sweden 18.6 billion this year, over nine times over budget, and out of all the immigrants that they're getting, only 500 have jobs. 500 have jobs, and they keep just shipping them all in, pushing up taxes for the natives, but they still want them in. There is no benefit here, and yet the great claim is, you need to bring them in. Why? So they can pay for your pensions. How? They ship them in, say they'll take the jobs when you retire, and then we'll use that money to pay for your pensions for the tax. And yet, they're not getting a job. Hundreds of thousands, 500 have a job. No, that's not right. See, they're coming here, particularly to Sweden, because of all the great benefits that they get, because of how much free stuff they get. It's a, over $100,000 a year is the average that go out to an immigrant in Sweden. Why would they ever get a job? Why would they want to get a job? They're there for an easy life and to eventually replace you. And you see this sort of pro-immigration, replace the native stance quite commonly. This isn't related to Sweden, but it's a good example of the common narrative that gets pushed. Don't have children, you don't need them, but at the same time, they complain about lowering population of natives, how the natives are falling off, not have a large enough population, therefore we must import all these immigrants to shore up the numbers, then why not instead incentivize the natives to have more children to shore up the numbers? But they don't, in fact, if anything, they de-incentivize it. And it's much, much worse than that, but it's a video for a different time. So use that excuse to bring in all these immigrants who don't share our values, don't share our customs, don't share our culture. They're not like us, they don't integrate, and now they're being told they don't have to integrate. So what do they bring? They bring a lot of crime. Let's look at it. Official data. Sexual assaults jumps by 70% in Sweden. So, there's a rising immigrant population, and the sexual assaults skyrocket. I'm starting to see a correlation here, but there's more. Swedish women terrified of sex attacks as migrants turn shopping centre into no-go zone. Female workers at Sweden's largest shopping centre are living in a constant fear of verbal assaults and sex attacks as migrant youth gangs have turned the area into a no-go zone. In Sweden, at the shopping centres, they have no go zones. That's what they're important. Mother opens up home to male refugee. He then rapes her 10 year old daughter. Won't be deported. Now this is a misleading headline. He didn't rape her. He just very aggressively groped the 10 year old in the house he was staying as a guest. And he won't get deported. He's going to do some counselling and get taught that what he did is, is just not acceptable. You don't just aggressively grope a 10 year old. What the hell are you even groping? She's 10. I'm about to show you a picture that you might consider disturbing. You've been warned. It's non graphic, but it helps paint the picture of what you're dealing with. That's what you're inviting in. That's what you apparently want. Let's continue. 15 year old boy was stabbed to death by Arab migrant because he was protecting young girl from sex assault. Where else but Sweden? The parents of 15 year old Lithuanian boy Armanis Palekis have blasted Sweden in the Swedish media for cowardice. It's about right. 
in the face of the migrant threat and for covering up the murder of their son. They're so PC, they're going to cover up the murder of a boy. Okay. And even when 60 Minutes goes to Sweden to show how peaceful they are, positive reinforcement to help push the narrative, they get assaulted and just prove what everyone already knows. They're violent. Biggest 2017 threat for Sweden is a lone wolf Islamist attacks. These are the people you're important. Your biggest threat and you keep importing them back in. Police in Swedish city appeal for public help amid upward spiral violence. That's how bad it's getting. There's not enough police to contain it all. Sweden's no-go zone crisis. Three police officers injured after being attacked by thugs. That's how bad it's getting. And I've got a little clip to show you some of the damage they've done to the cars. This is in Sweden. They keep keep importing these people in. They're violent. They cause crime. And everyone's afraid to speak out and stop it. Sweden covering up migrant rape and violent crime for the sake of humanitarianism? You're blatantly lying to push your narrative and you're failing at it but you keep doing it, they're doubling down and this is what's going to kill Sweden they're acting like giant pussies unable to save themselves because they're afraid of being labelled, of being shamed being called out, you have to just ignore that and do what you can to push the truth and if you can't there won't be any more Sweden. And this is just to finish it off. Walk of shame. Sweden's first feminist government. That explains a lot. Don hijabs in Iran. They're basically betraying their cause. They're all about women's liberation. And yet, there they are covering up. How progressive. Now, after all that, you know doubt see where I'm coming from. Sweden seems like a lost cause. Even one of their top detectives came out finally because he's nearly retired so he doesn't really have to fear losing his job and he called them out. He basically just said flatly pretty much all the crime is from the immigrants and it was a bit of a rant. But even he had to slightly backtrack his claim and say he was pro-immigration, just not as it currently is, because of the backlash he got. However, some of it was positive, with people even sending him flowers. Not just one or two, there was a lot of them. Out of sheer gratitude for how happy they were that someone was finally saying what I guess some of them were thinking but were too scared to say. So that means there's still a little bit of hope left. And then... There's a couple of intelligent people, that I know of at least, in Sweden who are putting good information out there, who are trying their best to wake up their fellow Swedes. That's the golden one in Red Ice Radio. And with a little bit of luck and the blessings of Odin, maybe just maybe, they can sway the public, correct the course, bring in a more nationalist party, stem the flow of the immigrants flooding in and start to repair and rebuild from all the damage from their current feminist government that is very quickly killing the country. In fact, a popular immigrant to Sweden on YouTube called Angry Foreigner also sees the problem and he sees what's happening and he knows it's bad and yet and this is an assumption on my part I can't help but feel back when this was playing out and the multicultural nonsense was being pushed on Sweden he would probably have supported it partly because he is an immigrant and partly because he is of that that persuasion shall we say and I base this on the fact that I saw a few of his videos and he took people out of context and spun what was being said to fit his narrative but he still sees the problem so 
there is hope yet. And if it does fall, as it seems like it very well might, they'll set an example of what not to do and how not to run your country. And hopefully, if they fall on their way down, they push up other countries, help them rise up and be a perfect example of what not to be.